Today is Tuesday, January the 7th, 2014. My name is David Faber and I'm going to do a quick uh, run through of um, some performance tuning on uh, the illustrious Rob Burns uh, PR Reach website, uh, which by the way, if you um, have a business, um, <clears throat> excuse me, you can uh, contact PR Reach for all your press release uh, uh, requirements. Rob will uh, hook you up with some really cool services there, including turning your press release into a um, a uh, video uh, newscast-like uh, piece of film. Very slick. All right. Uh, so, what I've done so far is I've um, I used Backup Buddy to do a um, a, a backup and then a a uh, migration of uh, PR Reach here to um, uh, one of my local servers inside my hosting system. And um, the oddities that I had to um, uh, fix to get this to work, um, just notes to Rob, is I had to um, create a, uh, um, in the WP content directory where um, uh, WordPress normally has its plugins directory, I created another directory there called uh, Plugins Archive. And I moved uh, three plugins there, which were... Um, let's see here. Uh, oh, let's see. I was in the process of um, finishing the import buddy here, so I'll just uh, hit this last button here, which cleans up all the uh, import buddy files. Chugga, 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 chugga. All right, so now we're done with that. All right. Okay, so if I go here to the uh, plugins, well, the WP content directory. Uh, there are three plugins I had to archive here so the system would work. Uh, the WordPress HTTPS uh, plugin, which is a non standard way of handling uh, uh, secured shell SSL access to the back end admin functions. My suggestion would be rather than using a, a plugin, or maybe the plugin was just uh, configured a little bit oddly. Uh, but my preference for handling SSL is to use the uh, the standard uh, WordPress core way of doing that, so that anytime WordPress updates um, or a site migrates either to a different uh, location or a different domain name, or a different subdirectory or a different subdomain, that all the migrations work. The problem I had here with this system was um, when I was logging into the um, my local copy slash WP admin, I was being redirected back into the main uh, PR reach site, uh, which was very bad. So, um, and the other two, the IMSC Core and Ping Fresh, those two plugins are using um, uh, Ion Cube. And the way Ion Cube works is um, Ion Cube is a uh, a uh, bytecode encoder. And um, what it does is it encrypts PHP so that you take Ion um, Cube and you encrypt your PHP and then you can um, uh, sell it. Uh, and then the, the um, person using the PHP though has to buy Ion Cube and then um, purchase your product and basically get a key to decrypt it through Ion Cube. So it's a way to uh, uh, sell PHP code so that uh, it's uh, locked and uh, uh, no one can just uh, you know give it away to their uh, friends or you know pass it around a mastermind group like I participate in mastermind groups and we're always sharing stuff that we've done or we have access to and this is a way to lock it up. The problem with this is that um, um, well you know actually I'll show you what the I'll show you the error message that comes out because uh, uh, if um, if you run into this problem it's just it's really gnarly so let, let me just show you the behavior here right quick um, Let's uh, visit the site here. So this is what the site should look like. And now um, what I'm going to do is uh, move IMS 
let's see, uh, move plugins archive. Um, we'll just do the ping fresh to plugins. So I'm going to move the um, uh, the plugin back here, and actually, it's probably going to be disabled here since I'm. Nope. Okay, so it was uh, still enabled. So what happened was um, I just I moved this plugin back in place, this PingFresh plugin that uses uh, Ion Cube to encode it. And now what I have is instead of my site, I got a white screen. Now uh, the, you know the white screen of death. So most people when they see this, they, you know they're ready to pull their hair out. Me, ah, it's just another freaking day working on WordPress. So the way that um, you figure out why you've got a white screen is, uh, let's see here, oh did I kill my window, oh dear, yep there it is, okay. So here's the way that you um, uh, figure out uh, what the white screen is, or what's causing the white screen. So I am at the WP content level, I'm going to go to the WordPress root level, and <coughs> Let's see, I'm going to uh, edit, um, well, I'm going to have to find, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a copy of all the WordPress directives to turn on uh, WP debugging at a very deep level so that it spews out every sort of bug that is possible out of WordPress and that will instantly show us what the problem is, well in most cases. So anyway, I'm going to pause the video and find those directives and put them in my PHP. Um, config dot um, or my um, uh, wp-config.php file all right so I have located another PHP file uh, that has these all these directives in it and um, I'm in VI here so I'm gonna say set no number to turn off the numbers on the left and what this is doing is it's saying uh, turn on uh, WP debugging um, uh, debug to a file and uh, don't debug to the display so in other words we're going to run all the errors to a, um, a file instead of uh, streaming them out on the display um, if you are running in a um, like a cloud VPS sort of instance situation where you don't have uh, root access or sh secure shell access to your server first off I'd never recommend that um, that will cost you a tremendous amount of money if you have somebody like me work on your site um, where I can fix something in a few minutes with SSA uh, with a SSH login and it might take hours trying to go through WordPress and figure out ways around um, WordPress um, Anyway, if you are running in one of those uh, VPS cloud sort of situations, then it's best to turn this uh, WP debug display true so that all the errors get spewed out to your um, whatever page you're on. So you don't have to try to FTP the debug log off your, your uh, cloud instance over to some place where you can look at it uh, over and over again. Um, Let's see. Oh, and uh, this uh, directive here is a is a, a very deep directive into PHP that says uh, to set the display error level to zero, which means to output any even the minorest problem, all um, information, notices, warnings, errors, everything that spews out of uh, PHP uh, regarding any type of uh, uh, error warning gets uh, output when this is turned on so these are essential I leave these on all the time in all my servers and the reason I do that is um, um, <clears throat> I leave this turned on in my servers because it doesn't create a performance hit because anytime you've got errors in your PHP code whether it's plugins or themes or some other ancillary stuff that has been uh, injected into your site, uh, in like inline PHP and posts or pages, things like that. Um, anytime there's an error, the PHP error subsystem gets run through for every error. In other words, if you turn this off, those errors still get generated and all the code gets generated uh, to process those errors. You just never see them. So for me, I leave this on all the time on all my servers so I can very quickly look and make sure that 
if I do have a problem on a server that my debug log is zero, uh, in other words, there's no records, and in fact, um, probably a good thing to do on uh, my production servers is just to write a little script that checks all the debug logs and on all my servers. Well, that's actually a really great idea, and uh, sends me a uh, email message, or it might even be cool to write a plugin that uh, pops up a uh, warning right in the uh, WP admin. Um, panel that says you know you've got some sort of um, problem that's uh, coming up and and uh, you know if you click on the link there uh, you know the big red um, you know error 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 whatever in your admin panel that it actually pops up the uh, uh, the debug log yeah that's a I'm gonna write that down that's a uh, debug log plugin that's a really useful idea especially for people um, running uh, VPS instances okay so um, I'm gonna pause this video for a minute and uh, edit my um, WP config file here so the passwords are occluded <coughs> alright so the, <coughs> the default is this uh, WT, uh, WP debug false so I'm gonna delete that and whoops re-edit the file help if I type the right thing okay so now we got the all the directives in here so if we look at WP content debug.log we should see that there is nothing there I'm going to do a tail with a dash F which means to uh, show the tail of that uh, file forever just to hang on the end of it and print it out and it'll error out this time because there is no file so now we go back here and say um, reload and we still have the white screen of death but now what we have is this so R means to redo a command redo the first command that starts with a T and now we've got a, f a file so here's the problem right here and this is really why I really recommend that most people try to you know unless there's just something that just you absolutely have to have that's uh, encoded with ion cube which I you know I'd rather just hire somebody to write some custom code than deal with ion cube because the problem is read this message here the file uh, pingfresh.php was encoded by IonCube encoder for PHP 5 and cannot be run under 5.5. .5. So it, this message is a little bit misleading. I think they could have been clearer, uh, the IonCube people. But basically what this means is this. Um, the server that I um, moved or migrated this um, WordPress system from is running um, about a three-year-old version maybe a two-year-old version of PHP which is a very bad idea it's a hacker's paradise because um, anytime you run an old code um, especially old PHP or Apache it's just uh, or an operating system kernel it's old it's just freaking begging for trouble um, so uh, the cur the system I migrated from was running 5.3 I always run the latest Apache and uh, PHP so I have all the fixes just makes uh, hacking my sites impossible I've never had a site hacked unless I set it up to be hacked which is called a honeypot site and sometimes um, it's useful to set up a site and let it be hacked so that you know the steps a hacker is going through so you can build um, uh, preventative um, uh, measures for that countermeasures uh, anyway, so I've never had a, a site hacked. I've been running sites. Um, I set up my first web server in my garage in 1994. So that was uh, 94.04.14. Wow, 20 years. Uh, man, that's incredible. Anyway, so the site that we came from was 5.3. The site we're running uh, is running 5.5. And so the code was encoded so that it will uh, run uh, PHP probably from about PHP I think the API has changed in um, 5.2 what this means is that for this code to work um, Rob would have to go back to whoever he got the um, uh, what's the name of this PHP or this uh, pingfresh.php 
and the other two plugins I moved out of the way and request that the um, the author give him a version that is encoded specifically for 5.5 of PHP and above. Uh, so until PHP changes the APIs again, um, the you know it'll work. So it'll probably work for like 5.5, 5.6, 5.7, probably on up. Uh, maybe I think the next version is actually going to be the 6 series. Um, so anyway, so the problem is that anytime you migrate a site to a uh, different hosting solution that has more up-to-date software or you get hacked and you say oh geez I figured out the hack is in you know the the gateway the hackers are getting in on is um, PHP so I'm gonna upgrade my PHP the instant he upgrades PHP on this site his site's gonna white screen and so he'll have to um, you know uh, deal with this anytime you've got ion cube uh, code that means that there will come a day when your site white screens uh, if you're doing uh, normal uh, updates to keep uh, malware off your machine very ugly all right so we're gonna fix this again and we're gonna fix it by simply moving this uh, plugin out of the way like we did before and we should see that we've got uh, our PR reach back now. And we do. Okay. Um, now, let's do this just for grins. This is usually um, This is usually the first step of um, uh, site performance tuning I do is I, I've removed the debug.log file and we've got our site actually running here. So the first thing is I'm going to hit reload here and see it's rolling around here. Okay, so it's finally finished. And now what I'm going to do is a correctly, um, well, that's a judgment. For me, a correct site is one that produces no debug.log file. So here's here's the first performance problem with this site. See the debug log file? When I hit reload on the front page it created a 30 kilobyte file. And all these are going to be errors. And yeah, We'll look at them here in a minute. Um, since he's using the Genesis theme framework I'm betting that the majority of all the errors re relate to Genesis because I hate to say anything's a piece of crap, but um, in the case of Genesis, um, here's the way that I say a piece of code is good or crap. Um, to me, a piece of code is good if it uh, produces no debug log um, information. Period. It should be clean. Same way with all theme. Same way with the WordPress core. Um, I've gone through and su submitted bugs myself that's cleaned up the entire core so that the core runs now with no uh, errors in the debug.log. Um, and you can go search for David Favor and um, WP underbar debug if you'd like to look at all those trouble tickets that got submitted to WordPress and they're all cleaned up now. So core runs with no uh, debug.log information. The WordPress uh, standard themes like um, 2012 or 2012, 2011, 2013, 2014, all those themes run with no debug.log information. Same way with all plugins. So my rule of thumb is you got good code when your debug log is always zero. And for this site, I, it may be pretty tough to, to speed it up at all because this means at minimum every page that gets presented is going to generate 30k worth of um, uh, data going through the the uh, PHP error subsystem. In other words, there's 30k of errors for every single page. So let's just take a look. At what this is. Uh, it looks like uh, some deprecated uh, functions. Yeah, so these look like they are coming out of um, plugins. So I, what I would do is I would just uh, hire somebody to 
fix all these plugins and actually um, there are a bunch of plugins out of date so the first thing I would do is update the plugins uh, let's see these are looks like maybe um, let's do one update here uh, two tw there are 220 debug lines here so let's do this one update of this uh, pretty links file uh, plug-in yeah this is a hackers paradise so uh, WordPress core is out of date the Genesis um, framework is out of date and there are 14 plugins out of date so let's go to the plugins here uh, oh yeah and, and once you move uh, plugins out of the way you'll get these um, uh, little warnings here plugin file does not exist and I think if you just hit reload here uh, it should uh, clean those up yeah all right so let's go to where is this pretty links thing because I think it was out of date uh, pretty link pretty link pro okay so all right so I'm just gonna bite the bullet here and update this plug-in and now let's go back and um, remove the debug log so there were oh just to you know it may be gone now so so the errors I was seeing are basically I mean there's a couple of scripts here there's like this next script but most of the the um, the um, errors are spewed by this uh, pretty link plug-in here so I just updated it and there are uh, well there's a bunch of stuff now so um, uh, let's see here so well, I'm gonna remove the debug log and we had uh, oh actually we're gonna have to go back to the site here okay so now uh, I removed the debug log and I updated pretty links so if we say uh, we're gonna VI the log again and oh no Let's see, pretty link. Oh, okay, so all the pretty link errors are cleaned up. Um, there are a whole bunch of errors now that are uh, coming out, and these are, I mean, they look like, um, I guess I ought to write a, um, I guess I ought to write a script to um, uh, format debug dot log as to plugins to fix or update and same with uh, themes so for example I could write a script that would go through and uh, find every occurrence of this line here stack trace and then look to the next occurrence of stack trace go back one line and see that um, you know based on this last line here it's either going to be in WP includes um, uh, plugin oh this this is actually yeah so uh, th this this is in core uh, because it's in a uh, it's not in the plugins or the um, uh, themes directory however it looks like it's being thrown by this error up above which actually is a plugin so I could search through here and say okay here are all the plugins and themes throwing errors and here's an error count that's being thrown so for example if you've got um, eight different things that are throwing errors and 90 percent of the errors are coming out of one uh, theme or plugin then that's the place to start fixing stuff um, so anyway all right, so let's remove. Um, well, actually, let's see. Grab uh, pretty link debug. Okay, so updating the pretty link plugin was all that was required to fix the problem. So um, I say kudos to whoever the developer is with pretty link because somebody turned in a bug to them and said, please fix this, and they did. So, uh, you know, whoever those guys are, you guys are doing a fantastic job. All right, so let's go back to WP Admin. So here's what web stress is also. That looks like it's averaging about 24, so we'll say 24 for right now. 
So web stress is a really complicated alias that does this one, executes this one command here. It runs the Apache benchmark program, uh, turns on Keep Alive because all browsers turn that on. It, it's going to run for 15 seconds and it's going to attempt to con to um, open a thousand browsers or a million browser sessions each with five connections apiece which is the normal how normal browsers work there's like a connection for uh, your HTML, a CSS file, a JavaScript file and um, a couple of images so most browsers default to five connections apiece so this would be like having a million visitors come to your site simultaneously using something like Chrome or Firefox or Internet Exploder so it's a great test. And so um, uh, the PR Reach system, just moving it into my container with no tuning, is running at 24.31 requests. So let's um, take a look at, uh, here's a site I moved for, um, oops, your address, uh, Jonathan Green the other day, uh, which when we started it was running around 12 requests a second and all I did was uh, move it over into my hosting um, system I've got set up for clients and uh, tune uh, the PHP opcode um, cache system for his site and also the uh, WordPress caching system for his site. Oh, and look what it is now. So it went from around uh, 12 uh, requests a second to over 5,000. And um, Usually to do that with simple WordPress systems takes me about an hour. So, um, you know, and it's a one-time cost rather than, uh, it, you know, Jonathan, uh, his hosting company had sold him a, um, um, he would told him that his system was running too slow and they'd sold him a, a more expensive machine and bumped him up from 2 gigabyte of memory to 32 gigabyte, which is ridiculous. Because when we did a speed test on this new system, the request per second did not change. And when we looked at the memory usage on his system, he had 31 gigabytes of memory free. So before he started tuning, with 2 gigabytes, he had 1 gig free. And after tuning, he had 31 gigs free. So all the memory that he was paying for basically was unused. That is a mark of an incompetent um, uh, tuning professional. All right, so let's, uh, let's do a, um, a little bit of tuning here. So what I'm going to do is uh, pause this video for a minute. And I'm going to go through and, um, well, actually, let's do one thing here first. Let's look and see uh, caching plugins. Okay, this is really ugly. A W3 Total Cache, as of about WordPress 3.2 or 3.3, if you actually look at the data of speed tests, this freaking plugin uh, will usually uh, slow a website by about half. Uh, every site I've worked on, um, uh, uh, if they've got a recent version of WordPress, uh, W3 Total Cache slows their site down. So here's the only uh, correct way to remove a cache plugin from a site to, to set up additional caching. Because if you've got multiple cache plugins working, uh, it's really difficult to figure out what's going on. And also, even if you've got like this, this uh, Total Cache is uh, deactivated here. Even if you've got a caching plugin deactivated, um, there can be all sorts of complications. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, activate W3 Total Cache and then I'm going to go here to the W3 Total Cache uh, dashboard which no longer says W3 TC, now it says performance and I'm going to click on the, I think it's the dashboard and what I'm going to do is um, yeah Okay, so I turned the cache on, and now I'm going to say empty all caches, and all caches successfully emptied, and then go back to um, plugins, and deactivate the plugin, the caching plugin, and delete it. And you have to do you have to follow this process because if you don't uh, enable each one of your plugins, you only do it one by one. If you've got three caching plugins on there and you know they're all deactivated, you have to do this one by one. And so uh, what I did was I activated the cache plugin, went to the dashboard and emptied the cache. So what that did is remove any cache files, 
which are different than removing the plugin. So if you got cache files laying around, that can cause all sorts of um, problems if the uh, uh, the plugin deinstall system isn't exactly perfect. And then um, uh, I so I deactivated the cache, cleared the cache cache uh, files, re uh, deactivated the cache plugin again, and removed the cache plugin. So if we go down here. It is gone, and I see no other caching plugin. So we're good. So what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to drop off for a minute, and what I'm going to do is go through because it's really a cumbersome process um, to go through, and uh, I'm going to uh, tune the Zend uh, opcache system, make sure it's working correctly with. Um, uh, PR reach, and uh, I'm also going to tune the WordPress cache system um, and make sure that's all working, and then I'll flip the video back on when I've gone through all that cruft. Oh, and the reason I'm turning the video off here is that this is all obscure stuff, and unless you have it set up on your site and actually have somebody that knows how to tune it, it's just a bunch of gibberish, so it's just a waste of time. Just know that... Um, uh, Here's how you can test the competency of uh, PHP coders too. Is um, you can ask them, um, you know, if, if if they're trying to pitch you that they can speed your site up. An, a simple question is, um, you know, what's the correct way to uh, tune a uh, PHP site, a PHP five site? And if they say um, uh, to tune APC, then they're incompetent because APC is no longer used for that. It actually exists, but it's no longer used. So you have to tune Zend Opcache, and then also if they say to install W3 Total Cache or WP Super Cache or any of the normal caches that you've ever heard of, um, they're incompetent also, um, and you know move on to somebody competent. All right, so I'm going to pause this and tune it up, and we'll see what we got to work with. Okay, um, now I'm looking at the um, at least one of the opcode cache. Um, back-end control panels. Uh, this is just the one I like because it gives me a quick glance at everything. So uh, I'm looking and I've got um, uh, plenty of free memory, uh, plenty of free key memory. Um, currently the number of hits coming out of the cache is 99 percent. So what this means is that PHP, when you run a PHP script you have to um, you have to interact with the the operating system and the file system to go out and find the file. You're moving the disk platter, or, you know, the disk seek arm all over the place, and looking through platters till you find the file, and then copy the file into memory, and then uh, run the file through the PHP compiler. Then hand that uh, byte code or object code over to the PHP VM, a virtual machine, and execute it. Very time consuming. So what an opcode cacher does is it skips all the steps except um, uh, running the code that's already in the the uh, v, the VM. So this basically arranges for when you run like you know index.php or whatever, uh, you don't actually do all that other work. It just comes straight out of the um, the virtual machine. Um, and there's a um, and then when you do PHP. Uh, our uh, WordPress caching, you go one step further even that says, you know, for a given amount of time, like for two or three seconds, um, every time somebody visits index.php, instead of um, doing any processing at all, just serve the HTML that was produced by the entire process. So that's how those two caching systems uh, relate. Okay, so uh, what we're really looking at here is this hits, and we're going to run another speed test. And what we're looking for here is two things. One, uh, you know, did our tuning of uh, PHP and WordPress uh, have any effect, which it may or may not. And also to make sure that the um, number of hits coming out of the cache, holy smokes. Number of hits coming out of the cache is still uh, 99%, so we'll hit refresh here. Did it refresh? Okay, my sites are so fast I can't even tell when they're refreshing. Yep. Um, okay, now let's see what the difference is. So we, uh, so by doing those two pieces of tuning, uh, tuning the um, the uh, PHP 
Zend opcache system and the correctly caching the the um, uh, turn on turning on correct caching inside WordPress we went straight from uh, uh, what was it 24 requests a second to um, 4558 requests a second and let's just run this again just to make sure that we were able to duplicate the speed the reason I run it again is uh, just to make sure that TCP is tuned correctly because if that number now goes down that means we've got to go and tune uh, TCP. Now it, w it went up a little bit so um, that means that Apache and, P and uh, TCP and the OS are working properly. Um, just for grins, uh, let's do one other thing here. Um, so uh, well, I'll wait to to tell Rob what the numbers are. Um, let's do one other thing here. Let's go back to um, our WordPress backend, and you know this may break all sorts of things inside uh, this system, uh, and. I'm going to do an update of uh, WordPress here and see how that affects uh, speed. Now, hopefully, if all is well, we'll get a clean upgrade. Oh, thank, oh, thank you for updating to 361. Uh, that ain't right. Oh, I clicked the wrong uh, link here. I'm going to say, please update now. Duh. Do, as uh, Homer Simpson says. Uh, it looks like... Huh. It looks like uh, we're... Um, being blocked by a plugin here from updating so I'm gonna go here to this update thing here update I'm gonna just deactivate this Now that, that was a really bizarre uh, thread there that we went through. Did that? Oh, okay, so it updated. So there's something funky about um, the um, that update. That's really ugly. I would freaking strip that plugin off my site um, if I saw any nonsense like that. Uh, what was that uh, plugin? Updraft Plus. <clears throat> which is a backup restoration system which by the way the only way for you to really know that you've made a uh, what I call a successful backup is to restore it someplace so a successful backup means that you make a backup on your system and then you go register some other domain or you uh, set up a subdomain like a dev subdomain or a, a sandbox or victim dot prreach whatever and you take your system and you restore that system into that new uh, subdomain. And if you can migrate, in other words, you can um, uh, take a backup of your system and then take that backup someplace and migrate it to a different URL, not the same one. You have to do a different one to make sure that the, the testing all works correctly. Um, and you have a functioning site after you do the restore, then you have a working backup strategy. I've done recovery for some companies, which has run into um, hundreds of thousands of dollars for one company um, uh, that I had to do uh, because they'd been taking 10 years of backups and they'd never tested a restore anyplace. So they had 10 years of backups that weren't really backups. They had to be gone through each backup at a time and incrementally installed and debugged and it just freaking took forever so the only way you'd really know that you have a working backup is do a restore make sure that you've got a working system that also means if you have nested WordPress installs for example PR reach has um, the PR reach uh, main WordPress install and then there's a, another WordPress install under a uh, uh, slash blog 
And then under slash support, there's a copy of um, uh, HESC running, H-E-A-S-K, uh, -E which is short for Help Desk, so HESC.com. And that is yet another PHP, or it's a PHP system. It's non-WordPress, though, so that means it's got a database. So for a correct backup to be done of this system, you'd have to back up... Um, uh, you'd have to back up the main site and actually change the backup, you know, make a custom backup where you said make a backup of the main site and skip any backups using the slash blog link because that's a separate system. Then you set up another backup that backs up only the slash blog system. And then you have to write custom software to, to back up HESC because HESC has a database and its own files that are non-WordPress so to actually make a copy that will restore and work someplace you have to back up all the files and the database um, and this is really important if you know disks crash from time to time and you know code becomes corrupt or people hack your site and you have to to uh, recover and if you have no recovery strategy that's been tested over and over then you can end up running into days of uh, time lost and it's better to take um, time to design your backup and uh, recovery restore migrate strategy on your own time rather than after you've got a production site that's down so you're losing money every day uh, you know better to do it when there's uh, your money flow is uh, up and running okay so um, let's just check and make sure that this is actually updated here uh, Well, where does it say WordPress 3.8? Okay, here we are. Uh, WordPress uh, 3.8 running PR Reach child theme. Okay, so now we're talking. Okay, so now we're going to do one more speed test. And wh what I w what I was doing here was uh, I'm I just updated to 3.8 to see if this uh, number changes here. If it goes up substantially, like to you know six thousand or whatever, then um, that's a, another action item that requires to go on uh, Rob's list of important things to do here for site speed up. Yeah, it didn't really make that much difference. We'll run it one more time just to get a little bit of a statistical average. So um, the um, the primary tuning for this site is to uh, uh, move it into a uh, tuned hosting solution and that's going to resolve the speed. Yeah, so upgrading the 3.8 didn't really make that much difference. All right, so um, that's going to wrap up this uh, uh, video of uh, a site tuning example, and uh, I'm going to pass this info on to Rob. And uh, for all your site tuning um, adventures and enjoyment, uh, be in touch, and I can uh, help you out.